So in this video, we're going to be making this drawing. So what you see on the screen is what you're going to turn in. If you're just watching this on YouTube and you're not in my class, you can model this and follow along with the video. So here's the part. I want you to open it. Again, this is from, uh, from a previous assignment, right? The slot block. Again, if you don't have this part, go ahead and model it. Keep it open. Make sure it's saved. Make sure you have these features, you know, the boss, the cut for the slot, the cut for the hole, and a linear pattern for the holes. So we're going to go up to this sheet of paper to make a new document. If you get this menu, just click on drawing. If you have this menu open, you can select drawing here from the icon. They both take you to the same place. So we'll do it from here. Make sure drawing selected. Click OK. Now what I want you to do here, select B, A and S I, landscape, and uncheck display sheet format. What that's going to do is delete your title block and the zones. I just want a blank uh, you know, sheet here. So because we have the other part right here open in the background, it's going to show up right here. And that's why I asked you to do that. If you didn't do that, if it's just saved on your computer, go to browse and find it wherever you save files. So I'm going to double click here. Notice how there's kind of a rectangle following my cursor, but we can't really tell what it's going to put on the paper. I want you to come over here and check preview. Right, right under the orientation. Now we can see what it's actually going to give us. So I want you to put the front view right about here, center uh, left of the drawing, left click, move your cur cursor over to the right, and left click again. Now you can right click and you'll be done uh, making projections. If for whatever reason, you only got one projection, go up here to drawing, go to projected view, select your front view with the left click, and you can add another view. And then you can see here's how you add views to a drawing. You can add uh, a lot of them very, very quickly. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of that menu. Now, this view is rather small. We want to increase the scale. So click on the front view over here on the left where it says scale, check use custom scale. And I want this to be a 1.5 uh, to 1 scale and hit green check. Notice how the right side view increased in scale as well. Um, that's because it is in projection, right? It follows the rules of projection. The only thing to do is move left and right can't move it up or down or change the scale. It gets that information from our front view here. Now, if you notice these little blue origin things, I, I, I don't like looking at them. So I'm going to come up here to the hide all types and click on the little eyeball and that'll make those go away. So at this point, we want to, before we add any dimensions, Get any of the views corrected, add center lines, uh, some of that kind of stuff. So the first thing we want to do is show how deep these four holes are. Um, we could do a whole section view, but I'm going to use a broken out section, right? So click broken out section. Come over here. You're going to be drawing a spline. So left click about where I'm showing you and click uh, often. Right, the trick with splines is to make lots and lots of clicks. Connect the spline right into a closed shape. Now, this might be a little confusing. Everything just kind of disappears. We've got to go over to the left. Now, it's going to be in metric until we change it. But what you can do in any um, value in SolidWorks is just type in 0.5 and type in IN for inches after it. And SolidWorks will convert that for us. Now check preview. And we can see our broken out section. And we can see how SolidWorks converted that 
into metric. Again, we're going to switch the units in a little bit. Click green check. Oh, before that, this yellow line shows us where the broken out section is taken. Okay, green check. Now I'm going to go to the annotation tab to the right of the drawing tab. I'm going to select center line and I'm going to select the top and the bottom uh, horizontal line for this blind hole and the center line comes up, All right? Green check. Now I want to add center marks for this slot feature so we can locate it. So right above center line, center mark. Click on this line right here on the slot. And notice how we get a single cross. We want to come over here to the left where it says slot center marks, right? Right now, the slot center is, a, you know, you can see the little image here, just one. We want to click on the one with two, right? And that'll show up for us. Green check. And I, ex I hit uh, right click somewhere, so this stuck around. I'm just going to delete it, okay? That shouldn't happen to you. But if it does, just delete it, no big deal. So at this point, right, make sure, you know, you, you save it. And we're going to go ahead and uh, add some dimensions. So I want you to go to the Model Items tab, not Smart Dimension, Model Items. Click on the left side of the part. Notice how only a few dimensions show up. Right here where it says Source, it's going to use Selected Feature. So we clicked on what's essentially the first boss base feature, and only the dimensions that apply to that will show up. Green check. Now I'm going to come over here to this depth, right? straighten this dimension out. Notice how the dimensions kind of look terrible, right? They're uh, metric and they're in um, aligned uh, orientation, meaning these numbers go up. They're not red from the bottom of the drawing. So the first thing we're going to fix is the units. Come up here to the little gear or options tab. We're going to, it, it always defaults to system options. We want to go to document properties. And down here, units, right? Click on units. Right at the top, we want to switch it from millimeters to inch, right? Inch, pound, second. Now, this is a place you can have all of your dimensions have a default number of decimal places, right? So I set mine to two, but you can have, you know, three or none or how, whatever you want. This can be handy for things like angles, as you'll see when we continue making drawings. Um, usually you don't need uh, extra decimal places and angles, so I'm going to leave that there. Click OK. All right, notice now we're in inches, but we didn't fix the actual dimensions. We're going to go back to Options, Document Properties. Now. Our overall drafting standard is ANSI, which SOLIDWORKS, they don't really know what they're doing. It should be ASME, but for whatever reason, they, they name it this. This is like the old version of ASME. It's, mine's going to be modified because I just changed that, that angle. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can use, I'll use this one. Okay, so when you go to dimensions, it's likely that even though it might say NSI up here, it's going to be uh, ISO right here. So if that happens, you're going to have to go through and change each of these to ANSI. Now, I'm going to show you right here in diameter. Notice how this is an aligned dimension. When we change it to ANSI, right, we get our, our uh, bent leader here, which is what we want. So you can kind of see what it's going to do right here. So just keep going. Some of these we're not going to be using in this drawing, but it's easy enough just to change all of them. Okay, and this is just a quirk of SolidWorks. It's something you're not going to have to worry about in the future because I'll have templates for you, or you can make your own templates, and you don't have to go through and do this every time. Anyway, click OK. Right, now our dimensions look good. So at this point, we can go through and dimension the rest of the drawing. And when I say dimension, 
the dimensioning really happened in the model, right? We're just expressing the model dimensions in the drawing, and I'm gonna show you why that's important in a second. Back to model items, click on the circle on the left, right? Notice the three dimensions for that pop up. Click on the circle on the right, right? Notice this one inch dimension pops up. Now, if this doesn't show up, it probably means you didn't use a, a linear feature pattern, you used a linear sketch pattern. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's line up these dimensions. This, you could leave it like this without the, you know, it makes the arrow disappear. But to flip arrows, select the dimension and click on this little dot on the arrow, right? It'll show like this, and you can flip dimension arrows pretty easily, right? So select dimension, click on the little dot at the base of the triangle. And bring this out a little bit. Grab this diameter and make it 45 degrees. Notice how we've got nice gaps for all of our extension lines. That all looks good. Now we need dimensions for the slot feature. So again, model items, select some portion of the slot feature, green check. And again, it's not gonna show up like this, but I'm gonna show you that in a second. Okay. So notice this 1.5 and this three inch dimension are way too close. We're gonna move that 1.5 so it's in line with that 0.5 dimension. I'm gonna move this out just a little bit. These two dimensions, we want them to line up. This dimension can move it a little bit. It could stay put, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now to modify a dimension, right? So this one inch dimension, we want it to apply one, two, three times. Click on the dimension, left click once. In dimension text, we can add information. So click right ahead of the arrow, type in three, capital X, space, right? So capital X and space, green check. For the radius, right, there's two uh, radia, radii. So right in front of the R, two, capital X, space. Green check. And we've got basically everything good here. This hole is gonna give us a problem. So let me show you what I mean. Go to model items, select the hole, and SolidWorks is gonna kick it back, right? It's got uh, I don't know, excuses for why it doesn't wanna give us that dimension. So I'm gonna do green check here. I'm not gonna track this one down. We're just gonna use smart dimension. Now, we want to use Smart Dimension as little as possible, and I'll show you why in just a second. So we're going to dimension from the top of the part to the bottom of the hole, move the dimension up here. It applies four times, so we're going to do four times space. Now, there's other ways to show hole depth. We could just put it over here with the 3.75. Oh, and I missed that. That needs to be four times 0.375. So what I'm saying is we could put the depth right here in the whole call out. Now, why are uh, smart dimensions bad? If we click on this dimension, double click, right? Nothing really happens. We can add information, but we can't change the dimension. If I double click on this dimension, which is from model items, it's known as a driving dimension, we can change it. Right? So that's the, the difference here. Can't change this, we can change this. The reason is that it's linked to the model. So what I want you to do is change this to 1.25, green check. Notice it changed the number, but nothing else changed. But it's got this kind of, I don't know, mesh around it that lets us know that there's a impending change we need to allow. And the way we do that is the stoplight, right? It's going to rebuild. You can just do control B or click on the stoplight. It's going to apply that change to the model, right? So if you open up your model, you will see, here, I can show you. So in our model, it has grown. 
right? Shows up as 1.25. Now, with your model open, I'm going to show you you can drive it the other way as well. So this four times diameter, uh, 0.375, I want you to change this to 0.5, green check. Same thing, we got a stoplight on the model, right? Notice how all four holes grew. And it's gonna rebuild in the drawing, right? So that dimension changed and the actual size changed. So go ahead and uh, you know make sure that's there. We're gonna add four times to these holes, right? I missed that earlier. SolidWorks does this sometimes. It'll move your dimensions around on you. Just fix it as you go until you get it you know, saved as a PDF and it'll be kind of good forever. Now, this is pretty good for the drawing. This is basically what I want you to submit. The last thing, add a note right at the top. Let me show that again. Annotation tab, note, left click up here and just write your name. Now one trick, basically all the text on the face of a drawing needs to be capitalized. All you have to do over here on the left is check all uppercase, right? And it'll take your note and do what it says, make it all uppercase, right? Green check. So this is what I'm looking for. To save it and submit it, we're gonna go up here, save as, uh, do the drop down, save as type. We want this to be a PDF, right? And if you check down here, view PDF after saving, it will. And this is what you're going to submit. Uh, grading wise, I'll basically look to see that it's the same as this. It must be a PDF. Uh, if you send me a drawing file, it's not a convenience thing. I just can't open it, right? When SolidWorks, the, draw, the drawing is driven by the model. So if you send me a drawing file and I don't have the model, it won't open, right? It has no information. So it has to be a PDF. And I think I have Brightspace set up so it'll reject anything that is not a PDF file. So that's it for this. Good luck on this uh, first drawing assignment.